This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Honey. Uh, last week we spoke to you about one of the best YouTube channels in recent years, All Gas No Breaks, and how the crew behind the show were actually, surprisingly, producing this content for a parent company who owned the rights to that show. Well, who would ever be foolish enough to uh, create an entire online brand attached to a company that doesn't care about their content and is just looking to make a quick buck off of them? You'd have to be a real sucker to do anything like that, wouldn't you? And what Elliot means by that is all of us, every <laughs> single YouTuber ever did that throughout the mid-2010s. Yeah. Yeah, it was all, we were so young, so dumb. Yeah, I'll sign. Sure, you're whatever. Gonna, you're gonna pay me $50,000 a year? <laughs> to <laughs> make shit. internet videos? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but but uh, these days it's it's more and it's more rare. It's a lot more rare now. Yeah, and we were blown away by the fact that this wasn't an entirely independent operation, but was instead reminiscent of the old school MCN finance model of YouTube production, where a parent company gets pitched an idea for content and then funds it while taking all of the profits and paying the actual creators a typically low sum of money because they are most likely inexperienced, don't have legal representation, don't read contracts, and are simply eager to get uh, work on their dream jobs. Mm -hmm. So they're quick to sign whatever a company th throws in front of them. Uh, Google the labor theory of value. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's a tale as old as time. It really is. Um, a guy named Karl Marx is writing books about it in the <laughs> mid-1800s, and here we are, still happening, here mm -hmm. on YouTube.com. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously, it's not restricted to just YouTube and the now nearly defunct MCN model. This happens any time that young and hungry creatives sell their ideas and projects to bigger companies. That company needs to make money, sure, and they are taking a risk on paying you to produce your project, but at some point, in the business relationship, it should become obvious that what you're producing is successful and sustainable enough that you can and should renegotiate your contract. This is also we, the Dave Chappelle thing from recently, mm -hmm. where uh, he was young, signed a, a pretty lopsided contract with Comedy Central to make what ended up becoming one, one of the, the most shows, iconic yeah. comedy shows of all time. But because of the terms of the original contract, he was getting absolutely stiffed un until he pressured them finally 20 years later to yeah. cut him in on more of the profits. And yeah, it's uh, it's scary because once you're in that far and this company owns your work, I mean, they could easily say no. And then your dream job is over. They could easily be like, here at um, here at uh, WB, we, uh, <laughs> you know, we're more interested in, uh, you know, gamer content and less in uh Weird news or whatever this hypothetical channel might be doing. No. So uh, you're. Oh, fired. you're talking about us? No, no they were more hypothetically. They were YouTube more interested channel. in uh, people uh, taking clips from movies and putting it on social media and getting a billion views a month. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Well, look, it, it looks like at some point last year, after building a brand and a channel with nearly 2 million subscribers and over 70 million video views, the team behind All Gas No Breaks, consisting of Man on the Mic Andrew Callahan and his two-person production team Nick Mosier and Evan Gilbert Katz, were faced with some tough decisions on how to move forward with the relationship with that company that they signed with, a company called Doing Things Media, which describes itself as, quote, owning and operating more than 20 of the most culturally relevant brands across social media. All Gas, No Breaks show, Shithead Steve, No Chaser, Middle Class Fancy, Animals Doing Things, and others. I haven't heard of any of those. But I've, I've heard of No Chaser. I'm sure they do great. Uh, I think Animals Doing Things is like across like all the social platforms. I think that's like one of those, uh, is, you know. Is Shithead Steve and Scumbag Steve the same person? No. Because that Scumbag Steve guy, he was nice. We met at South by Southwest. Yeah, but he's just a meme. I don't know what he's doing with his life. I haven't thought about Scumbag Steve in a long time. Uh, he's very active on Twitter. He seems like a nice guy. Okay, good. Uh, every day, millions of consumers interact with their creative content. They understand modern internet culture and have a proven methodology for creating, navigating, and incubating cultural digital trends. Our process is unique, and our purpose is to connect consumers around the world through humor and happiness. Sounds like a great company to work for. Where do I sign? <laughs> But yeah, now, thanks to the great reporting from Taylor Lorenz of the New York Times, mm -hmm. we may, uh, we, we might just know a little bit more about what was going on behind the scenes between the crew who created and made All Gas, No Breaks, and, um, you know, they made it what it was. There was no show without them. Yes. Between them and the company who had signed them, including uh, what appeared to be demands that the channel turn their focus away from politics and uh, more important documentary work like their visits to Proud Boys rallies, the Black Lives Matter protests, lockdown protests, and so on, which, uh, you know, took them from creating lighthearted slice-of-life videos to actual journalism. 
get rid of all that and yeah. instead go back to, you know, go back to the fun, less divisive, lighthearted uh, party coverage. Which, this is a ridiculous demand because one of the first videos that they got any attention for on like Reddit and Twitter was, uh, I believe it was like a, a book signing from like someone in Trump's orbit. Mm -hmm. um, it was like a Donald they, Trump Jr. book signing. They did what they should have done is when they had something that people resonated, that resonated with people, they focused on that because yeah. they realized that it was actually important yeah. and was getting if the look, views that it needed to if get. If you look at their views, like they, they really, they shined in the last year and a half with all these crazy political rallies and uh, mm -hmm. especially at the right wing places because these people are objectively fucking nuts. So <laughs> you, you put a mic in front of them, you're going to say shit that's funny to yeah. the other 90% of the population who hasn't overdosed on Kool-Aid. Yeah, that's it's a, a great formula. Like, everyone has seen interviews at spring break a thousand times. Yeah. You don't need it. Yeah. They went, and like we said last time, they put themselves in harm's way by it, doing a lot of these yeah, videos. Yeah, some, the, some of their videos... Uh, Both with uh, a pandemic... And with people who are generally yeah. uh, would put anyone on edge. Yeah, so they were doing all that, uh, all while paying them what we assume to be a small fraction of what the videos were actually bringing in monetarily. Uh -huh. uh, we'll give you some of the more interesting bits of info that were gathered in this article, but you, you should really just go read the whole thing because it's incredibly in-depth. Uh, we'll leave a link in the description below. Yeah, go, go to that article and give it and give it as many views as possible. Please do. Uh, but uh, here's some of the excerpts from it. Uh, let's start with his compensation. Quote. In addition to the RV, doing things offered Mr. Callahan a salary of $45,000. Oh, my God. Uh, plus additional money for equipment and production costs, and later, profit sharing, according to people involved in the agreement. Okay. Uh, they hired two of Mr. Callahan's childhood best friends, Nick Mosier and Evan Gilbert Katz, to help make the show. Now, in regards to that profit sharing... Yeah, that's um, good. That I mean, that's something that was unheard of back in the day. But, but it, it's... According to this reporting, it's not what you think. It's not like a straight up profit sharing kind of thing with the monetization of the channel oh. and potential branding and merchandising. It seemed to just have something to do with their Patreon. Yeah. Which, if you're working for a bigger, well-financed company, having a Patreon for a project that looks independent, it's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quote, Doing Things had started a Patreon for the show. Mr. Callahan received 20% of the profits from the show, and another 20% was split among other members of the show. Doing Things received the remaining 60%. God. Uh, so it seems like the Patreon was split up, but it maybe it was the show. Either way, mm -hmm. if they were getting a profit share, that's a lot more than a lot of companies were doing. But not with the, the Patreon thing. is un, like That is ridiculous that this company started a Patreon yeah. and then only gave them a sliver of the Patreon. Yeah, it's it's weird, and I mean, I think I don't think these guys are the only example of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, I know it's not, mm -hmm. uh, based on other people in the space who have had similar sort of arrangements like this, where they've been strongly urged to set up a Patreon for their show, but they're like, okay, but like Patreon's for crowdfunding, and you guys work, are worth a billion dollars. Yeah, so that's a little weird. Yeah. Um, uh, anyways, quote, uh, it was a 360 deal where doing things owned everything Andrew did. They offered him a promotion, but it included a six-month extension of his contract. Mr. Callahan had also signed over the rights to the brand's intellectual property and the name All Gas, No Breaks to doing things. Damn. So in regards to their coverage, uh, the shift into doing actual journalism and the amount of output that was being requested by the parent company, uh, quote, in late May, the crew traveled to Minneapolis to cover the protests after the killing of George Floyd. Mr. Callahan felt that many news outlets, in focusing on looting and fires, hadn't captured the anguish of the protesters. It wasn't so much of me being like, let me get political because I want to get more of a liberal audience, Mr. Callahan told Vice. It was like, media is not covering this. The media is not talking to the people causing destruction in Minneapolis and figuring out why. And that's like, it's a great point. He was one of the only people, there was a... Uh, uh, I mean, Unicorn Riot was the only source I was watching during the, especially the first week or so of Minneapolis, because mm -hmm. the news was not talking to anyone. And, and actually, AutoZone's on fire. Yeah, so you got like Unicorn Riot and a few other live streamers who are actually going around like getting people's opinions on it. And I'm like, I'm getting a completely different look mm -hmm. at this than the other 75% of this country that only watches Well, and it was good, too, because at, at this point, they had the baked-in audience of people who liked uh, a lot of the other videos, and leading up to this point, they wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to this side of the argument. Yep. 
So uh, it continues, quote, his followers relied on him to make sense of the events. The Minneapolis video set the show to a completely different level, said Nate Kahn, 24, a podcast producer and videographer in Los Angeles who worked on All Gas, No Breaks. Quote, it basically went from funny one minute Instagram clickbait to an actual boots on the ground news source. According to people who worked on the show, Mr. Haley asked Mr. Callahan to focus on party content rather than the news. Quote, Reed from Doing Things was constantly pressuring us to make the show less political, said Mr. Khan. Stick to gaming. <laughs> God. Oh, God. This is... It's frustrating. Yeah, this Because, like I said, their shit really, really took off once they got political. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're not going to make everyone happy all the time. And look, they did, uh, like, it, it's not that they got political. It's that they turned the camera lens to important things yeah. that were happening. And I'll say this, because, you know, our show has gradually gotten more political over the last half decade it's like the world got a lot more political yeah things it's it's hard to avoid <laughs> yes everything that happens now is a fucking issue and i don't like it but it's where we're at man it just uh, just occurred to me i really hope that chad kroger channel isn't also owned by a uh, greedy capitalistic company because those, yeah. those guys are and that's another channel that was like really just like dude content but it got political during the pandemic because yeah. like they're down in orange county where uh, in the beach cities, it's like no one wears a fucking mask. Everyone's super. Hey, bro, do you wear a mask? Yeah. So like their videos about just like encouraging people at the beach to put on masks in Huntington Beach was like political content, I guess. But like it's only political because the people down there are fucking nuts. Yeah. This the, the pandemic should never should have never been political. But yeah, before that, it was like they would prank call or show up at at uh, community meetings to like pitch <laughs> like the Britney Spears toxicity water treatment uh, plant. I hope they own their content. Yeah. Those guys are great. Anyway. Uh, the no, All Gas, No Breaks team, they also apparently entered into a development deal with Tim and Eric's production company to create a long-form version of the show. And Callahan and crew were expected to keep producing content for Instagram and YouTube while producing that show at the same time. No breaks. But then came the falling out between the team and uh, doing things media, ding-dong media. Well, <laughs> in mid-December, Mr. Callahan asked for a larger portion of the Patreon earnings and to get out of his contract, which was set to expire February 2022. A few days after the request, doing things locked Mr. Callahan, Mr. Gilbert Katz, and Mr. Mosher out of the All Gas No Break social media profiles, citing a security issue. Hmm. Quote, Andrew said this was a punishment for us not creating enough content for them, and he wished he never signed the deal, according to Mr. Khan mentioned earlier. Quote, in February, doing things sent a letter to Mr. Callahan saying his job would be terminated if he didn't produce two pieces of Patreon content by March 1st. The company fired Mr. Gilbert Katz and Mr. Mosher and tried to get Mr. Callahan to hand the show over to a new host. He refused, and on March 4th, he was fired too. God! Yeah, yeah. Which is going to make things awkward because apparently the show with Tim and Eric's company is still moving forward with both Andrew and Doing Things Media. What? But uh, his relationship with the All Gas No Breaks YouTube channel, quote unquote, is over. And as we pointed out in our previous coverage of all of this, Doing Things Media has put out a request for replacement hosts as well as international hosts so they can attempt to expand the audience and content around the globe, which... We're not sure it's going to work, at least on YouTube, specifically on the pre-existing All Gas, No Breaks channel, mm -hmm. because it goes without saying at this point, viewers are overwhelmingly loyal to the creators and not the brand name. I feel so bad for whoever ends up with that job, because it's, like, it's not their fault. Yeah, it's not but... their fault, but, it's, but they're going to get shit on, yeah. and it's like, okay, you've given me an impossible task. Yeah, exactly. It's like everyone who took over Inside Gaming afterwards. Mm -hmm. All great people. How many times do we got to teach you this lesson, old man? Exactly. <laughs> the brands, they just don't understand. Man, brands just don't understand. <laughs> brands, they just don't understand. Yeah. Anyway, Andrew and his team will undoubtedly have a following no matter what you know they call their new channel or, or what their content evolves into. While doing things media, they might be able to squeeze out some decent viewership via TikTok and Instagram where they can navigate through an algorithm more easily and where people aren't as dedicated to following someone for their consistent uploads. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Again, another very public lesson for companies, brands, and especially people who produce digital content. Um, but either way, we look forward to whatever Andrew and his crew does next because uh, his content rocks. And we're, we're happy that he should be able to get some independence and freedom soon. Mm -hmm. We really hope that he got a decent enough deal for the show with Tim and Eric. Yeah. Um, I mean... I, that's that's a weird thing. That's going to be an awkward situation. Yeah. I like. I, I hope that doing things media or at least... Uh, they're a production company called Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope that they like kind of are like, hey, let this guy do what he wants. Because that'll be great promotion for whatever he goes on to do independently. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. It's 
it's tough. And uh, but look, he he'll be fine. He'll yeah. be fine. Like the no, outpouring of support for this has is, is been great. So no worries there. Um, anyways, before we get into uh, Microsoft's threat to ruin Discord, I'm so mad about this. I'm steaming mad. <laughs> and also the cinnamon toast shrimp saga that's taken over Twitter. Oh God. Uh, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Honey. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to even popular fashion brands and food delivery. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Then you wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you will watch the prices drop. Mm -hmm. Been using this a lot. Um, We've been using Honey for a very long time. Yeah. I, uh, I, would, I would love to have like on my profile how much calculated savings is because it's got to be in the hundreds of dollars. Yeah, if my, not I mean, my favorite Honey story is I got a free lamp when I bought a desk. Yeah. Free lamp. Yeah. And it's a good lamp. I've got about $80 worth of uh, Honey gift cards and Honey gold just sitting there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. It adds so, up. There you go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free. It installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our show. We use it. We love it. So will you. So get Honey today for free at joinhoney.com slash ITDaily or by clicking the link in the description below. Very easy. That is joinhoney.com slash ITDaily. Thank you, honey, for sponsoring our show. Now, back into the news. So, remember when Microsoft bought Skype, like, a long time ago? Yeah. But, you know, Skype at the time was one of the best applications around if you wanted to make some internet phone calls or chat with some friends without having to use TeamSpeak or Ventrilo or something. Like, we take it for granted now. You can chat in any number of ways online. But Skype was very novel at the time. Yeah, like before 15 that. 15 years ago. People would have to like buy Ventrilo servers and rent, like pay yeah. a monthly fee for them to it get everyone terrible. chatting at the same time. It, it's, I, when it I, seems like it was longer in the past than it actually was. When I studied abroad in college, it was mm -hmm. like I could call my parents for like a cent a minute on Skype as opposed oh, yeah. to like a calling long, card. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah long it distance. was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Microsoft bought Skype long time ago. And, uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> a big boy like Microsoft buying up Skype, that that did wonders for Let's Skype, right? Let's check in on Skype right now. It only made mm. Skype better, mm. right? Everyone's using Skype these days, right? No, wrong, because yeah. Skype fucking sucks. It it's, does. <laughs> it's turned into bloatware. It's it's the it's tragic. It's it's jammed into every version of Windows. It's just there. Yeah, you start up Windows for the first time, and it's like, welcome to Windows. Also, here's a... Oh, what's this? This is Skype. Also, your Skype... Uh, I mean, I think I finally just, like, closed my account. But, like, over the years, I would sign in, like, maybe once because I'd get, like, spam alerts. I'd sign in and just be full of, like, like someone got into my account. Yeah. Like, I, no matter how many times I changed my password, like, it just seemed like a playground for hackers. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, no one uses it anymore. The UI, it became just sort of unmanageable, complicated, stupid. I just want to make a phone call. Yeah, that's all it was <laughs> really at the end of the day. Look, people used it for chat services. I remember for quite a while because it had like the vo voice over IP ability where you could get a group together. But really, what Skype did the best was having it on your fucking iPhone 1 or whatever yeah. and uh, and loading up $5 worth of credits yeah. and being able to call home from anywhere or call any other country and be like, okay, I'm not going broke doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so after the Microsoft acquisition, Skype uh, very quickly kind of dropped off the face of the earth for many users. And now the big M has targeted yet another fantastic, independent, beloved yes. text and voice chat service. And we are a bit worried at how Microsoft might destroy the whole goddamn thing. Yes. It, it, this, Leave Discord alone. This app is currently perfection. And anything... There's nothing wrong with it. Anything that puts it slightly off kilter is going to ruin it. I am a little bit annoyed by the fact that I, it updates uh, on a daily basis. But, yeah, it does update a lot. And but also, it, it does it very quickly. Like any social uh, media platform, people abuse it in certain ways. Sure. Of course. But as a functioning app... It's an incredible platform. You can, the, the, fact that, <laughs> the fact that I can make a Discord server for like my friends and there's like a handful of people or I can make a discord server that has tens of thousands of users in it yeah and like it's the same platform that's crazy it works very well it's very simple there's a discord for 
Frickin' anything. There's a Discord for Mountain Dew. There, I'm on the I'm on a Chili's Discord. <laughs> Everyone's like during the pandemic, people were like, hey, Chili's back open. And people took pictures in front of it. It was it's very strange. I, I joined it because it was a fucking meme. Because I was like, yeah. why does a Chili's have a Discord server? Everything's got a Discord. But people in there, they fucking love it. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh it's just that whenever a big company like this starts eyeing a product that we use every day, and they also have a long track record of messing things up, mixer, Skype, <laughs> many other things. Uh, or Google doing anything. Yeah, if it was, I'd be just as pissed if this was Google doing it. <laughs> Google Hangouts is the worst product that I mean, still exists. It's ever. not. No, Hangouts I don't think even exists. Now oh, really? It's, now it's Google Meet. I don't know. Google's gone through like five different iterations of the same product, and they're they, they don't improve on it. <laughs> it's just they just you change know what's, it. What's funny about that is like, I remember somewhat recently in the before times using Google Hangout or whatever it was called to do the same thing that Skype used to do. Yeah. And I put money on it, and I still couldn't figure out how to use it. Yeah. it's That is the worst problem. Anyways, yes. Suffice it to say, we would be just as worried if Google was yes. buying them. Yes. But uh, Microsoft is apparently, quote, in talks to acquire Discord for more than $10 billion, according to people familiar with the matter. Which... Don't do it. I don't know. Discord, if I worked there... Fuck yeah, acquire that bag. $10 billion for an app that just essentially allows you to create chat rooms. Yeah, I don't think they're really making that much money. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> congrats to everyone who has a decent stake in that company. Uh, they should enjoy their early retirement. Uh, we just hope that uh, if this happens, Microsoft's plans for the app don't include any kind of overhaul or intrusive monetization, and maybe instead they just integrate it with Xbox or PC Game Pass or something. Please, please don't touch it. Mm, even those. I'd rather not. Just leave it alone. Mm. Anyways, so the details from Bloomberg's report. Bloomberg! Bloomberg! He ruined that. Got the moves like Bloomberg. He ruined the, his own company's name by running for president. He really did. Uh, from that article, quote, Discord has been talking to potential buyers and software giant Microsoft is in the running. But no deal is imminent, said the people who asked not to be identified because the discussions are private. They add that, quote, Discord is more likely to go public than sell itself, one person said. Mm, okay. Representatives for Microsoft and Discord declined to comment. So, um, yeah, our analysis here is that Discord probably won't go public. No. Uh, they will probably sell to someone because that's the ultimate goal of any startup. Unless, yeah, no, in most cases, it's, it's usually... If you have a giant booth every year at E3 and every other trade show, that is burnt money. That yeah. you need to get back. You want to sell. Yeah. That's, that's you know. That's advertised. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's the easiest way to financial success in the tech sector is yeah. building something that's moderately successful and then selling it for a boatload of money to an established player. Mm -hmm. But uh, picking the right partner and hoping they don't destroy what you built is pretty vital. I, guess, I mean, for some people. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the people who made Discord don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm sure that, like, I mean, it's like Tom from MySpace. He sold to News Corp, and then we never heard from him again. Yeah, he, he seems perfectly happy with he it. He just popped up randomly online one day and was like, by the way, I've been traveling a lot. Here's some pictures. 2003, they're like, wait, so you're just walking away? He's like, bro, no one's going to be using this shit in two years. <laughs> Literally, fuck off. Bye. Some other kid from, I don't know, MIT is probably going to yeah. develop some new version of this that's more like a, a yearbook or a Facebook. And when that happens, you know, no more MySpace. So I'm getting out while the getting's good. <laughs> Yeah. You're crazy. What yeah. are you doing, Tom? Could you imagine Tom being like, oh, what are you guys doing with my platform? Like, no, he's fucked off to, no. to Hawaii. No. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. also important to note, Microsoft isn't the only company that has approached Discord for an acquisition. It's probably a lot of companies. Yeah. From the article, Discord has also held discussions with Epic Games Incorporated and Amazon.com Incorporated Oof. in the past, according to two people familiar with the matter. Okay. Uh, Amazon would be worse. so much worse. Worse. And Epic... I don't know. I feel like they'd be real petty and like not allow it on iPhones or some shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I feel like they would touch it the least or mess with it the least. I don't know. I don't know. All of these suck. This is all bad news. Yeah. Uh, but it's an inevitability. Yeah. Discord's not just going to be like, hey, thanks, community. You've given us enough server boost money to fully operate and support literally millions, tens of millions of like video chats and constant yeah, I don't, audio. I calls. don't know how they're hosting works like you can upload as many videos and photos as you want on yeah. there and it's just stored forever like i can scroll back up to infinity like two years ago and there's posts it's, it's all getting there. fed into fucking norad and the fbi i guess i don't mm -hmm. know who knows anyways uh <laughs> let's take a break here let's not worry about discord right now let's they, worry about our cereal yeah well that's further in the future but man enjoy discord while you have it in the 
exact moment it is in right now. Yeah, Gen General Mills. Not in doing good right no. now. General Mills you worry about right now. No. On to this week's insane viral tweet sensation. And it comes from a guest that we had back on the ETC podcast a few years ago. Jensen Karp, who uh, joined us to promote his book at the time, Kanye West Owes Me $300. What was his rap name? Uh, Hot Carl. Yes. Uh, and that book was, of course, and the podcast was, of course, filled with stories of regarding his hip-hop career in the 90s and early 2000s, where he was going to be the next big thing before having his career shelved because Eminem blew up. Only room for one white rapper. Mm -hmm. Now, he, of course, has gone on to do plenty of other things as a successful writer, comedian. He owns an art gallery. He married uh, Topanga, Topanga from Boy Meets World. Yeah, and he's also a serial aficionado. So it should come as no surprise that he was extremely upset when he cracked open his box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch recently, only to find this otherwise delicious breakfast cereal included some items that were definitely out of place. Mainly, leftover shrimp tails in his fucking cereal. But they're covered in cinnamon. Imagine Delicious. That. This is disgusting. Yeah. So the whole saga, it's a bit hard to follow because it's like broken up into many separate tweets and responses to and from the Cinnamon Toast Crunch account themselves. Yeah. Uh, we'll do our best to tell it as it played out. Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, why are there shrimp tails in my cereal? This is not a bit. We're sorry to see what you found. We would like to report this to our quality team and replace the box. Can you send us a DM to collect more details? Thanks. Guys, I'm not sure I'm ready for another box. We understand your concern. We promise you that our team will look into this and get to the bottom of it. But in the meantime, we want to do everything we can to make this right. We'll need further details to research. Yeah, at this point, it's like a brand ambassador, social media person just doing the standard response. Oh, like, God, is that fucking shrimp? Well, play uh, cool, buddy. <laughs> let's, uh, let's just go through the JIRA ticket list and yeah. put on whatever response we need to. But uh, yeah, so he DM'd them. Uh, taking things out of the public view, as yes. brands typically want you to do. Uh, but uh, upon completing some visual analysis of their own, and of course offering him a replacement box, they assumed this was over, because they replied publicly stating the following. Some strip gaslighting here. <laughs> yeah. After further investigation with our team that closely examined the image, it appears to be an accumulation of cinnamon sugar that sometimes can occur when ingredients aren't thoroughly blended. We assure you that there is no possibility of cross-contamination with shrimp. Your eyes are deceiving you. Don't piss on my leg and tell me it's raining, General Mills. <laughs> uh, to which Jensen replied, holding what we are... They're very obviously literal cinnamon-dusted shrimp tails. That's what they fucking are. Yeah. He replied, Okay, well, after further investigation with my eyes, <laughs> these are cinnamon-coated shrimp tails, you weirdos. <laughs> I wasn't all that mad until you tried, now tried to gaslight me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the brand went back to DMs saying that they'd be happy to send some vouchers for free product. No! <laughs> to which he replied, no, you just told me it wasn't shrimp tails. Then tweeted, uh, imagine a universe where I'm like, yuck, these are shrimp tails. Then I re-examine them a few hours later and realize, nope, these are just accumulations <laughs> of sugar. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not shrimp tails. That's uh, the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> At this time of year, centralized it, in this box is, of cereal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, can I see it? So, no. No, you can't. You can look at this image of it. It's, it's so unfortunate that this episode isn't sponsored by Magic Spoon. Yeah, it'd be a great integration. Because I've been getting back into cereal in a big way, thanks to them. I, but now I will never touch General And there, it was, Magic Spoon is just clearly balls. You can't be, mistake them for anything. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, the cereal people, they then tried to get Jensen to send in the bag so they could <laughs> see for themselves. Yeah. Which, you know, made him hesitant because based on their responses, this could mean that Cinnamon Toast Crunch could turn the tables on him and say that their company analyzed it and found the product to not contain traces of shrimp. And uh, they, now they have all the evidence. So <laughs> yeah. Very convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, quote, our quality team would like to get it sent into us so we can take a closer look. We'll be sending a prepaid addressed envelope so you can send the pieces to us. Uh, to which he replied, yeah. Yes, but also I'm going to keep one of the two because your last response publicly was super weird. And since you'll be receiving a shrimp tail, I'll keep one so you don't continue to try to say it's sugar and make me look insane. <laughs> they uh, also were like, they, they wanted him to like just stay home for half the day. Yeah, they're like, we're going to send a, between a the hours between, <laughs> between this window and you have to like hand it to him. I, I'm not just going to sit next to the door with my shrimp tail waiting for your guy to show up. <laughs> Okay, so after this, he started to dig deeper, literally into the bag of cereal, uh, where he found a piece of string and cereal with weird little turd-looking things on them 
which many people said was probably actual mouse or rat droppings. Like baked into the cereal. Yes. Uh, the consensus by this point seemed to be that vermin had gotten into the bag or, or the mix at the factory somehow. They ate shrimp or they brought tails in with them, and then they shit all over the breakfast cereal. Um, also, the bag a- had been taped up at some point. Well, which it, was, is, it was like a family pack. So is there like two in it? Yeah, he, so the first bag that he opened was normally sealed. Yeah. But that's where he found the shrimp tails and shit. But the second bag of the family pack was like taped shut with electrical tape. Yeah, which is gross. Not supposed to happen. No. Uh, this is all very gross and very weird. Uh, anyways, oh, the whole story blows up. Memes are made. Fun is had by all on Twitter. It, it, sure, it's gross, but uh, yeah, this was a nice distraction from the hellscape that we live in, right? A nice day on Twitter uh, in this very specific sect of Twitter. Yeah. So anyway, but Jensen, he, he wants to know. They fucked with the wrong dude. Yeah. yeah. He wants to know the truth about this, so <laughs> yeah. he takes things further. He brings that bag of tainted cereal to a lab for testing. Yeah. This bag of cereal couldn't have possibly ended up in the possession of anyone more diabolical. General Mills really fucked this up. Yeah. Uh, in the midst of a media blitz and hefty dose of unwanted attention, Cinnamon Toast Crunch issued a uh, public statement, not as a reply to him, but as a public post on their social media page, which was vague enough that anyone stumbling across would be like, what are you even fucking talking about? Yeah, anyone who was out of the loop on this, like it what? was purposely made to be like, uh, okay, cinnamon. Yeah. Okay, serial account I follow for they, some reason. They provide no context. Here's what they wrote. Yeah. While we are still investigating this matter, which matter, <laughs> we can say with confidence that this did not occur at our facility. We are waiting for the consumer to send us the package to investigate further. Any consumers who notice their cereal box or bag has been tampered with, such as the clear tape that was found in this case, should contact us. They left it open to such rampant, uh, uh, like, uh, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. People who saw this who, whoever these people are that follow a serial account for no reason other than, like, the only reason I could see following a serial account is to complain about the serial. You know, there's probably a Cinnamon Toast Crunch Discord out there. We I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm sure the, it's, the conversation's probably going wild. Oh, no, it's probably been, like, completely quarantined and banned already. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so it, they, someone probably read this and was like, I'm assuming there's a used condom in a bag of cereal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is, it is sort of, it's like, which is worse, not knowing or... Them saying out loud, uh, shrimp tails and rat shit and string. Yeah. Anyway, as of Tuesday morning, things ugh, took an even more serious turn. While Jensen was getting his shrimp a, a daddy DNA test, <laughs> yeah. uh, General Mills reached out to him to get the cops involved. Yeah. Dear Mr. Carp, thank you for getting back to us. If you are unwilling to send the items and cereal packaging to us, please provide these items to your local law enforcement. This may be product tampering and we need the opportunity to investigate the packaging. The cops? No, the FDA. <laughs> the local cops are going to be like, what do you want me to do about this? <laughs> yeah. I'll be so, there I'll be there sometime in the next 48 hours. Yeah. Oh, it's a shrimp? What do you want me to do? Yeah, so this is how Jensen replied to that email. Okay, the police you want to involve in your investigation can call me at the number I initially sent you or by contacting me at this email. I'm not walking into a random police station yelling, here's the shrimp tails that General Mills wants like it's a smoking gun from a murder so that's where we're at now at least where it's at while we finish this <laughs> we're filming this episode yeah. this is a developing story uh you know it i eagerly await what happens next yeah but uh jensen's getting the cereal tested by a lab general mills is pissed that someone fucked with the cereal or maybe they did i don't know jensen says he was just trying to help them out at first until they started gaslighting him into thinking he was just sugar clumps yeah he doesn't have any plans to sue the company, but he also says that he might change his mind if the tests come back and show that he was inadvertently eating rat shit. Yeah, because apparently he did have a bowl of cereal before he found the stuff. Yeah, that's... Also, like, the the fact that it's specifically shrimp tails, like, a lot of people have shellfish allergies. This could have killed somebody. Yes, yeah, that's, that's another thing to, uh, to point out. Like, also, like, it's not kosher. It, yeah. There's a lot of problems with it outside of just being like, oh, it's some shrimp. Um, there's all... Dude, there's, this goes so deep. There's so many tweets re- relating to this. Like, a lot of them are funny jokes and stuff. But also, there's people who, like, showed screenshots of emails that they sent to General Mills about having shrimp in other products. Like, <laughs> so I, I don't know. What is going on? I don't know. It, look, shrimp tails and cereal, I'm glad to have it. I'm glad to have a story like this uh, as opposed to a bazillion other things. I'll take it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that, uh, there's a, another solid entry in the Twitter archives from March 2021. Yeah, put a pen in it. Uh, anyways, hey, coming up really soon, uh, oh, yeah. first Saturday of April, I believe April 3rd in the afternoon, 
we are going to actually be screening a movie. Yeah, you, like, you can come to our channel and watch the entire movie. thing. The entire thing. We are watching the Feels Good Man documentary about Pepe the Frog. Which I've already seen. It's great. I uh, so it. you'll be able to watch the entire thing for free on our live stream. Uh, we'll make the, the link and everything live. Eventually, we're just here to tell you about it. So remember, April, I think it's 3rd, uh, sometime in the afternoon. But after we screen the entire movie, which again... Not like Bill and Ted. We're actually going to be watching this movie. It'll be on, on the screen. screen. Uh, after that, we're going to be uh, discussing the film with the filmmakers and some special guests. Um, so that is going to be very exciting, very awesome. It's, it's something that we haven't done before, and we're excited yeah. to try it out. So definitely uh, mark your calendars for that. And in the meantime, over here, check out the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News for we got a great episode for you. And also, if for some reason you're still morbidly curious... My entire review of the Snyder Cut, which, by the way, I watched the Whedon Cut yesterday. Yeah. What the? It, Why would you subject yourself to that? I was so curious because I started watching the Red Letter Media. Yeah. Uh, oh, and God. they go through the whole Whedon Cut. And I was like, no way. And, like, turned it on and ended up watching. I skipped through a bit of it. but I, It's crazy. It's insane watching that after the Snyder Cut. Yeah. But anyways, those episodes are now popped up over here. Sorry about the uh, discussion. But uh, watch both of those, and we'll see you soon for some tech news. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.